On today's episode of the Mark Titus Show, a new AP poll is here uh, for the first AP poll, the preseason AP poll, and the Kansas Jayhawks are your number one team in the country. Um, this might sound familiar. Last year at this time, the Kansas Jayhawks were the number one team in the country. They ended up getting, I believe, a four seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, it was not a season that went particularly well for Kansas. A lot of familiar faces are back. They are a they, they have backfilled some of the guys they lost, though, so it's not exactly the same team. How is this season going to look for Kansas? We don't know. All we know is that last year, Hunter Dickinson was, was the best player on the number one team in the country, and he said, I love it. I love it. Bring it on. We're the number one team. I want everyone to know. And then the season didn't go well. So we'll see how it goes for Kansas. Um, uh, Alabama is second. I think uh, a lot of the the Bama fans thought that they might be the number one team in the country. Maybe they will be by season's end. UConn comes in at third, the two-time defending champions who uh, just played Rhode Island in an exhibition. Um, I don't need to read the whole poll to you, but uh, I think that just that's probably what I expected, to be completely honest. I think Kansas won. It, it makes sense for a lot of reasons. I'll get into it in the show. Uh, Jim Root's joining me. Our, our old friend Jim Root from Three Men Weave is uh, going to join me to break it all down. But uh, we're basically going to overreact to the AP preseason poll. Ken Palm put a poll out as well, uh, which isn't really a poll, I guess. It's a rankings. It's a Ken Palm algorithm. Um Evan Miyakawa, he already did that like a couple weeks ago. He put out his preseason uh, rankings. Uh, Dan Hurley's mad at all of them because UConn is not number one. And uh, I don't know, I find it fascinating. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. Speaking of Dan Hurley, they did play Rhode Island. North Carolina played Memphis in a game that I watched a little bit of. Um, you know, playoff baseball's on, and I'm flipping over to exhibition college basketball games. It's starting to, starting to, the, the blood's starting to flow a little bit. I'm, I'm getting pretty excited about this season. So uh, Jim and I will. Uh, I don't know. We'll just bullshit on on the the AP top twenty five. The the Carolina Tar Heels looking pretty good against Memphis. Um, I, I'm I'm getting excited about them as well. A lot of stuff to get to. We'll do our best to to touch on all sorts of things in the AP poll and and around the country and all that stuff coming up. All right, Jim Root is here. It's been a while since you've been in here. Um, welcome back. It's exciting to be it's back. A, yeah. there, there's more Earnhardt gear every time I show up. Dude, I don't know what's going on. It's 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 becoming a problem. I'm a pretty neat guy. I don't like clutter, and uh, I'm making one exception in my life, and it's Dale Earnhardt memorabilia. So it's swallowing this desk alive, but at the same time, it's kind of cool, and people are just sending me shit. I'm not buying any of this. So that's, that's not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal at all. Um, yeah. So, uh, all right, you're, you're here. College basketball is right around the corner. Um we had games last night. There was, I was watching. What was was UConn Rhode Island? What channel is that on? That was on UConn Plus, which yeah, I okay, didn't know I existed. Watching. Some <laughs> sort of streaming service. It was free on there, but yeah, UConn. They apparently got their own deal now. Um, I want to start with UConn because they are the two-time defending national champions. Uh, they they are expected to be a very good team. Third ranked third in the AP preseason poll. Um, I I think I said last week and the week before, and you can. You can stop me from one of the one of the things I love about having you here, Jim, is that this is the one opportunity that I just get to turn my brain off and let you. <laughs> you're the guy that knows all the shit. Great, yeah, That's and, pressure. Um, and I just get to ask you the questions and be a fucking dumbass like I am. Um, but I think UConn, it to, to me is the one team that is head and shoulders better than everybody else in their conference in terms of the power conference teams. What do you think about that? What do you think about that statement? Let's let's chew on that for a second. I think uh, to me, like Kansas, if they're the class of the Big Twelve, I think Houston's right behind them. Baylor's up there. There are there are enough. Arizona's in the mix. It's not completely no obvious that big, it's Kansas. No one in the Big Ten is good. No so one in the Big Ten no is good. So there's no one team that's head and shoulders. I had a half a thought of like, all right, who's the best Pac-12 team? And I was like, ah, that's right. Got to delete done. that thought process from my head. And then um, I Duke ACC ACC's Duke. Might yeah, Duke, yeah, Duke might be, but Carolina, not so fast. And Duke always loses some weird road games because they're right. freshmen, and then you're like, oh, wait, they never, they almost never win the regular season. They're picked to win the regular season every yeah. preseason. They almost never do. Um, yeah. Bama and the SEC maybe, but I think the SEC is going to be really good. So yeah, I, th I think that's, that's a yeah. closer race too. It, UConn, it, watching the Rhode Island game, and it's the smartest thing you can do is, is watch these preseason games when they're playing with rotations as, mm -hmm. and, and take a strong – take away from it right. and project it onto the right. rest of the season. But the one thing that did feel different, and this isn't going to stun people, it's not going to pull your pants down or anything, but they didn't have a seven foot two guy in the middle. And right. it makes it a little easier for the other team to score inside. Rhode Island has a guy from Western Michigan that had like 10 in the first half, was kind of dominating the yeah. paint, got Samson Johnson in foul trouble, which will happen probably every game. And it was like, oh, yeah, UConn's not immortal this year. They were still right. awesome. 
They ran away with it in the second half. Their offensive execution is still absurd. They, they, they read a play the first time out, uh, or first like off the tip. McNeely wrapped around two different screens, ended up getting like basically an uncontested layup. It's like, oh yeah, they, they can still they do can that. They can still do that, yeah. Luke Murray can still they draw it up. Clean offense, yeah. But uh, the, the defense feels different. It, it feels like there's, you know, they're not going to rampage through March again. Because yeah. It's not clinging, waiting at the rim. And does any part of you in saying that uh, have paused because you're like, they've won the last two and they still have a ton of talent and cause Dan Hurley's doing a hell of a job in the preseason of just like, I don't, he's not, I don't want to say he's, he's, he's not being like overly aggressive. I don't, I don't think he's doing anything like out of pocket, but it does seem like he's uh, taking notes of every single person that doesn't have UConn one. And it, and it puts me in a position where uh, on like the last show he did, I was like, I, I think UConn's a top five team. I'm not sure they're the best team in the country. But I also I'm really scared to say that. Maybe I'm just scared of Dan Hurley. But it's like I I remember I remember being here last year going into the season. I didn't. It was the same sort of feeling of like I know UConn is going to be good, but what they're losing is I I, I saw how valuable it was to them. So I'm unsure of it. I just need to see it on the court first. And then we started seeing it on the court, and I was like, ah, okay, now I get it. And I'm worried going into this year, like it's because at some point they're going to fall off and they're not going to win the national championship. Maybe, maybe. But this team could. This <laughs> yeah. team, you know, the, this team is this team is in a vacuum. This team could be a national champion. You know, forget the last two years. Like if we went into this season, we'd be like, oh yeah, UConn could win the national championship this year. So, um, how do you personally like, let, like do you do you let that affect things? Like when you when you think about like the fact that they've won the last two and Dan Hurley is. Uh, a coach who's like, yeah, keep doubting us. We'll we'll keep proving you wrong. All that sort of thing. Or do you, are you like that? Would last year was last year. Flush it down. This is a completely new team that we have to to look at and evaluate. I'd love to say I flush it, but you know, it, it does sit in the mind a little bit that Dan Hurley has probably a bulletin board the size of mm-hmm. this entire studio with everyone's face on it that is saying anything. Mild. I swear to God, if my voice is in the national championship, uh, actually, I kind of want that. Yeah, wait, that's that's, that feels great. Say, for that'd be brain. awesome. That would actually be good for me. Um, so say something right now that will be on. There's no way UConn is going to win another national championship, Jim. It's, three in a row. Cra- three in a row insane. is crazy. Two in a row. It had been a long time since we've seen it. Three in a row is virtually unprecedented. Yeah, in the modern I, era. Can't imagine. Okay, good. Yeah. Now we've got that. That three bite three. is there for them. <laughs> UConn uh, uh, tech team. Go ahead and pull that. Uh, no, I mean I'm looking. I've tried to say every year, what's this team going to be good at? What are their flaws? But like with UConn, what they did last year, recycling, they weren't the same team as the, the year before, but every guy that came in was better than he was previously, right. all the transfers. So you kind of have to expect that with Mahaney and Terrace Reed, who had some, both of them had some ups and downs at their prior stop. And now Mahaney's coming off the bench behind Solo Ball, who looked like incredible. That yeah. he, he was the best player on the floor, a guy that was a bit player who never shot while Stefan Castle was injured. Yeah. And now he's potentially their, their stud as a sophomore. So... I, I, as much as I want to harp on, like I think Klingon was one of the few like super differentiators that they had the last two years. They're just gonna find another one. They'll probably. find another one. Yeah, yeah. They'll that's that's what one. the UConn fans will tell me, and they'll probably be right. They'll probably be they, right. They were yeah. right last. Off they were season. very yeah. right last off, last off season. I think um, I picked UConn third in the Big East last year. Preseason. I think I had them behind Creighton really? and Marquette, just <laughs> barely. And yeah, thanks to the UConn fans for not bringing I, uh, them up as much as they could have. I Stefan Castle was the one for me last year that I just didn't. I don't pay as much attention to recruiting as I should have. And um, I know, I mean, like you can tell me you're bringing in McDonald's all Americans or whatever. And I'm like, That's, I need, I need to see what this guy actually looks like before I get excited. And a bunch of UConn people were like, just wait, wait till you see this guy. But every, and they were fan very right. Just wait. I know that's what's hard. And yeah, that's like, what's hard. And the one other we can, I, we don't have to transition immediately, but UNC had two five-star freshmen, that debuted against right. uh, against Memphis, and they looked bad. Yeah, so, if you didn't know who they were, you wouldn't have known that they yeah. were the five stars. Yeah. yeah, Ian Jackson, Drake Powell just had rough debuts, and that's fine. A lot of freshmen are going to, but that didn't that wasn't right. the case for UConn. And uh, maybe they've earned the benefit of the doubt of like every single guy is just going to be always put in the right spot to succeed, and that makes it hard to be negative on them. Yeah. What if? Uh, yeah, Luke Murray's still there. I guess he he gets the. He gets a lot of credit for that because I'm I'm trying to like yeah, think through Kevin like Young. it's the biggest coup. Every time they win the title, th- every other coaching search is done. So yeah, their assistants that's don't true. Get that's true. It's <laughs> that's like a this never ending cycle. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like UConn fans after these last two years are behaving as though Dan Hurley was hired two years ago, 
in every single NCAA tournament he will ever coach <laughs> in his life. He will win an NCAA championship. And I'm like, well, there were teams before the last two where it didn't go so well. So what if it is just a Donovan Klingon thing? What if it's just a Luke Murray thing? Can't what if it's he lost to Mark Turgeon in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, right? it, yeah, that happened. It's crazy. It's crazy how like just two. I mean, granted, back to back national titles will will change the narrative on a motherfucker for sure. Like that, I I'm not confused as to how it happened, but it, uh, you know, the, I, I will not be gaslit into believing that Dan Hurley has won a national championship every single time he's coached. At some point, he's not going to win. But I'm also not brave enough to say it's not going to happen this year. I'm not. I'm not the brave soul that will uh, will say that. You you mentioned a freshman. Um, I do want to talk about North Carolina in the game last night, but I I, I I'm getting ahead of myself because I got excited about this. Quick break to talk about our friends at DraftKings. The roller coaster of, a, of an NFL season is moving right along, and it promises to be a month full of tricks, treats, and, of course, touchdowns. At, in DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL is the number one place to bet touchdowns. Running it in from the one or an 80-yard bomb, we don't care how they score touchdowns. We want to bet on them, and DraftKings hurt us and is delivering. Ready to, bet, uh, ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. Here's a reason for new customers to do a touchdown dance on their own. Bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code TITUS. That's code TITUS for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. When you bet just 5 bucks, only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Um, This is another topic that's come up with TJ, our Rutgers guy, who... Uh, is very excited. Was this today, TJ? The Slam magazine cover yeah, was released today. Today and Dylan Harper and Ace hype. Bailey are both on the cover of Slam it's magazine. It's pretty fucking cool. I don't know how much uh, cultural relevance Slam magazine still has today, but it's fucking in cool. the Hitchings house. It's, yeah, yeah. it's it still pops off. Um, we've been talking about Rutgers and uh, just kind of what the expectation is for them, but um, on a broader scale, that like. We're at a point in college basketball where a team can bring in two of the top three recruits in the country, and they are picked. Like Blue Ribbon had you guys what fifteenth, seventeenth? Yeah, Ken Palm has us seventeenth, I think, in the Big Ten. Yeah, um, oh, you're twenty fifth in the AP poll, right? But you're twenty fifth yeah. in the AP poll. Uh, but it seems like like the I don't need to tell you this, Jim, but there used to be a time where if you're a team that brings in two guys like that, you're like, well, shit, a top ten team at least. Um. And all by by all accounts, the people that have have been at practice and have have watched the growth of Ace Bailey and uh, and Dylan Harper through the years, they're like these guys are unfucking real. And yet they have two of these guys coming into Rutgers, and there are a ton of question marks about how good they might be. Um, where 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 are your where's your head on all this? Because I because TJ, the two of us are are drinking the Kool Aid, and we're like, yeah, this is going to be a hell of a year for Rutgers. But then some people are like, no, the the years of having great freshmen. Are, are long gone forget all that i don't know I, I don't know what to make i don't know how to make sense of what's going on in piscataway yeah Rutgers was a team i was higher on as i wrote our big 10 preview for for three men we the stuff we're doing and i had Rutgers, i think in the top seven maybe six or seventh and it's like yeah the talent's ridiculous i watched i i think harper is just fantastic he's like the kind of the coach's son but also nba yeah. prospect like yeah. it's not really fair to have both of those yeah things right going on um, then Bailey's, of course, uh, just kind of an alien. But I, I, the the role players they put around them make sense. It, like each guy's good at one thing. Yeah. Like Agbole, the big man, can play defense, but he can't catch the basketball. A couple <laughs> guys can shoot, but they can't play <laughs> any defense. And it's like you want a little more versatility from your supporting cast. Um, I, I the the freshman thing is also tough right now because there's. 24 year olds like this is the last year of the right. fifth year guys and the past couple of years freshmen have not performed very well like even highly ranked guys there's only been a couple that rank super highly and sometimes it's like reed shepherd who is ranked 50th it's not even right. a guy that's right a top five prospect so it's not a lock that those guys are going to be stars right away but this is a better class for sure right i think everybody would say like the top six guys in this class would have been number one last year yeah so maybe that helps lift rutgers and I don't know. I believe in those guys. I, I think computers are a little lower on them. Humans, I'm hoping, are closer to right. Yeah. I'm a human too that has them higher. But I'm glad the yeah. AP poll got it right because they they need to be in the top 25. Because this is the 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 preseason AP poll is very important to me because I think it's a way to capture the attention of the country. And you're not going to grab everybody's attention when playoff baseball and football are going on. I understand that. 
But uh, there has to be some sort of announcement that college basketball is back. And, and it's ba you're basically announcing college basketball is back and these are the teams you should pay attention to. And I think a team that has two guys that might be top five picks is a team that you need to pay attention to if you're a casual basketball fan. Um, so I love the, I love that Rutgers is, is in the ranking. Yeah, of course, at some point they're going to have to play these games and, and prove how good they actually are. But when you got Rostin going to practice saying, he said, what do you say about Ace Bailey? He's like Jabari Smith with handles or something, which is like, I mean, the expectations are I'm, being set really fucking high. <laughs> if you have, I don't. You could put four of me around Jabari Smith with handles, and that's a that's a that's a tournament team at the very least. Well, you you got a corner <laughs> jumper, Mark. Come on, don't, don't. Yeah, four of true. me might not that's be true. the same thing that's as true. four of you. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's insane. It's like if it's what do you know a, a positive report out of practice? I know. You believe I know. it? I haven't seen any of those. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but well, I mean, I will. I, one, one thing about me is I will. I will buy the hype on any um, any freshman that's coming in. It's harder to buy hype on guys I've already seen. It's harder to buy hype on like, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't. If you told me, it's, we call it the allure of the unknown. It's like the family yeah, guy clip. Right. Right. Like it could even be a boat. It's like, well, you could either have the boat or the mystery bo box. Yeah. yeah. If, <laughs> if, if you told me that Hunter Dickinson is he's moving his feet at a level we've never seen before, and he's, I, I really think that he's, I would be like, all right, well, let's let's relax. Ethan Happ but, shooting yeah, threes. Ethan Happ now. shooting threes. Okay. Now, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> Indiana did that with Trace Jackson Davis, where uh, I'll never forget this as long as I live. Mike Woodson gets hired, and he's like, I'm going to make Trace Jackson Davis a pro, which is credit. You know, Trace Jackson Davis is turning into a pretty good pro. But um, I remember that off season. Like every clip coming out of Bloomington is Trace like jab stepping on the perimeter and hitting jump shots and and then he's hitting like baby hooks with his right hand because you know he's he only goes left and that was a criticism against him. It's like we got to develop that right hand and every single clip is just like baby right hook. Here's a jump shot, baby right hook. Here's a jump and then the very first game he just goes left hand, left hand, left hand, <laughs> spin, fake spin, back to the left. <laughs> oh, the left hook. you should just stick with that. He's, the, he's really good at it. <laughs> he's the exact same guy and as it turns out that guy's really fucking good. So. Uh, who cares? Um, the Big Ten in general is kind of a mess, but kind of intriguing. Uh, I'm 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 on the fence here as well. That the my thoughts on the Big Ten are like I think it's gonna be super fun. I think the the race for a regular season Big Ten championship, which I don't even know how much people value anymore because of imbalanced schedules and conference realignment and all that. But you know, um, Purdue, Purdue still values it. Purdue still values right. it for right. sure. Yeah. Um, that race will be intriguing because I do think there are a lot of teams that that have a have a shot at, at winning it. Uh, but I'm also worried that the Big Ten on Selection Sunday could be a league that gets like ten teams in, and the highest seeded team is like four. It gets a four seed or a three seed. Yeah, like I, is there? There's probably no better encapsulation than like whether you like the Ken Palm rings or not. They have 15 teams between 11 and nine, and nine and 11 right now. Is that <laughs> like 15 of 18 are within <laughs> two games. That. I, that is. There's 100% factual on the projected standings. It, it is hilarious to look at. Only Rutgers at eight and twelve, Washington at seven this. and thirteen, and then Purdue at fourteen and six. The other fifteen <laughs> are within two games. It is a completely comical visual. Oh my god! But I think it kind of paints the picture of it, the Big Ten. Just kind of a shrug. It's like a choose yeah. your own adventure book, a Rorschach test. Like, what do you think is going to happen here? You can make a case for it, and it's like I can't yeah. really push back against it. Um. I think uh, speaking of of the shrug and the unknowns and like the stuff that we don't have much time, we got to get our takes out before the season starts. Is uh, Braden Smith for me is is one of those uh, topics in that Braden Smith was he first team preseason All American? Second team, I think he was second team. I know he was Big Ten Player of the Year. He Big Ten Player of the Year. Sure. I think he was second team AP preseason All American. Um, but I, he's he's considered one of the best players in the country. And I'm not here to say he's not one of the best point guards. And what we've seen of him has been incredible. He he runs an offense, can can hit shots from anywhere, is uh, plays under control. I I love Braden Smith. Um, but there are naysayers there's, that there's a butt coming here, boy. There are <laughs> butts, a lot of butts with him. Um. How easy is it to look great when Zach Eady's rolling to the basket and swallowing everyone alive and creating space and all that? And I think there is like a, a group of people, a lot of them are coming out of Bloomington, Indiana, that are saying that Brad Smith <laughs> is uh, – he's an Eady merchant, we'll say. And like how good is he actually? And, and we'll – where where are you with Braden Smith? Like, do you think Purdue is a viable um, Big Ten threat? And that, that, that Braden Smith, all these accolades he's getting, which I think are deserved based on what we've seen. But of course, Purdue is going to be a different team. Um, and I think just saying that, like, like in the same way that UConn has been great these last two years, Purdue's last two years. What if they are just a Zach Eady? Now, I love Matt Painter, and I I, I love the pieces they have, but um, they they're an interesting case because, yeah, I, I I'm not exactly sold that they're going to be. Uh, 
you know, like top 10 good all season, but also I, the guys they have coming back off of a final four team and, and the leadership they have, again, I'm not brave enough to say they're not going to be. And I'm stuck, and I need Jim to make sense of it for me. Well, the most important thing Braden Smith did this offseason was grow a beard. So he doesn't have the same goatee anymore, which is, I think, good for visuals, just good for good for vibes around around the Purdue program. Um, I, I'm hesitant to say Purdue is just like an ED program because – you know, Painter's been in the top 25 at Ken Palm nine straight years. Right. Five of those in the top 10. So, you know, obviously three of those seasons were without Edie in the top 10. So he, he can he can get it done. I, I think what's going to make Braden Smith that level, like maybe not second team All-American, but I don't know who else I'm picking for Big Ten Player of the Year besides like maybe Harper or Bailey, um, is that I think they're going to run a little more. They're going to get yeah. out and play a little faster. It's not going to be like we need to make sure Edie is in the post yeah. getting a touch. They can open it up. And they they have run a little bit under Painter in the past, but they've just like the last six years they've had Haas and right. Swanigan yeah. and, and Edie and all these giants. So perhaps they get out and run a little bit more. He's the maestro in the open court, um, making a lot of reads that way. I still think he's a pretty good pick and roll player. He's got that Chris Paul elbow jumper, yeah, pull up fadeaway. That's that's one of his go tos. I think he's going to have an awesome year. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go that way where I feel very good about him first team. I'm very uh, I'm very much a Braden Smith fan, and I want him to be awesome. It's just like the last the last we saw of him in the national championship. I mean, it was it was tough. Now you're playing against an incredible basketball team with a ton of athleticism on the on the perimeter and all that. It's just that that's. Um, yeah, can, can he be a guy that's like good enough to lead Purdue to uh, you know f- another Final Four? Frankly, if that's like what Purdue aspires to be now, is like we we've, we've we've now s- gotten over that hump. Now let's continue to keep knocking at that door and keep doing that. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I, I I love the guy though. I I love watching him play. And I think Purdue. I think you're right. They're going to get up and down more. And uh, like Miles Colvin and and Cam Heidi and yeah, like, I'm these excited athletes a are going to yeah. I, I, it'd be fun I'd to say watch. I like I like Smith more than Purdue this year. Does that make sense? Like I think he has an awesome year, but I think they take he's going to get his, but like it's fifteenth yeah. to twentieth rather right. than top five or ten. Uh, well, when it becomes like nut cutting time to not have Edie to dump the ball down to, and um, you know that's going to be interesting. Like what what is what does a five point game with three and a half minutes left look like for Purdue now? Uh, yeah. When you don't have a guy who's good at the free throw line and also hard to guard and you can dump it down to and all that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, uh, the big 10 is just a, a total mess. Who do, you, um, who do you like best out of the big 10? Are you an Indiana guy, which the uh, are not, that's more of a, I think Indiana has the highest ceiling and Purdue has the highest floor to me. I like I, that. I think Purdue Purdue is comfortable. If if you hold a gun to my head and say that uh, a team pick a team from the Big Ten that's going to make the tournament, I will say Purdue. I think Purdue is going to comfortably make the NCAA tournament. Will not be on the bubble. It's just a matter of like, will they? You know, is it, do we have to take it seriously that they're going to make a deep run or not, or yeah. does this just feel like a second round loss type team? Um, Indiana, I think if everything goes according to what the talent they have amassed. What they believe, how they believe it could go, I do think Indiana could be like a Final Four team. It's just a very massive if, a very massive if. Did, because did you talk about the Woody quote where he, he just said the word small ball in Indiana, like fans? Yeah, lost, out. like oh, he mentioned it. Right. the yeah. fact that he even mentioned yeah. it is like oh my god. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I, I Indiana's a big time wait and see team, but you know they. Uh, they they hit the portal and they got their guys, man. And I I, I think they're gonna have a ton of talent. Illinois is a team though that I've I've been reading the literature on, as I like to say. I've been I've been yeah. reading the literature a little bit on on the line eye and trying to trying to figure them out. Yeah, uh, I know uh, Mark Titus show guest Kevin Sweeney was at practice today. Yeah, at, down at Illinois, and he had some some very positive things to say. Positive reports out of practice. Yeah, I, I, it's really yeah. again shocking stuff there. A quick Indiana question for you. Yeah. And maybe you've discussed this on your show. Do you, would you care at all as an Indiana fan if your team was the one that like, oh, they spent seven million dollars of NIL for this roster? It's double the other Big Ten teams. Like, why would you care? Well, I'm an Ohio State, State alum, and it's happening with our football okay. team. Where every Perfect. time, every time I turn on College Game Day or any of these other shows, they're just like, and remember, Ohio State twenty million dollars is what they're saying they spent. <laughs> it's not my money, Jim. Yeah, I don't care. Why? Should there's my- no, there's no salary cap to this stuff and and it's not my money so unless you're one of the donors that's writing like a million dollar check for one of these guys um i don't really understand because like we, we when ohio state football lost to oregon like that i um not everybody but there is there, there's like a contingent of ohio state fans who are like for the money we spent we we deserve 
we didn't spend dick, dude. It was yeah. like it was like five guys like wrote the checks. Dude. Yeah. We didn't spend <laughs> like I'm not. I didn't spend anything as an Ohio State fan. Um, so I. I, I don't care. I, I can't. And that's the rules. That's like, that's, that's what the game is now. So I don't really understand how that's like a criticism yeah, of, it, I'm totally with you. Just, right. If your team is spending it, uh, if your basketball team decides to spend $15 million on a team, cheer for them anyway. Like, yeah. Who cares? That's awesome. Now, that's if you're, you. if you're someone like, like Dave uh, Portnoy here, like a couple of weeks ago said he'll spend $3 million to get Michigan a quarterback, if that's what it takes. Um, and Michigan's quarterback ends up stinking. I do think that that's like, a position where you can be like what the fuck yeah. what the fuck you know like <laughs> yeah. you know you get upset about the money if that's you if you're like the guy like I paid this guy 3 million dollars and we we he can't yeah should Michigan know, fans get mad at the quarterback the or, man, yeah. Dave for his decision um, why would you pick that guy for 3 million but yeah this, the, that's the that's the terms of engagement now so I don't I don't, I don't think it's a problem at all um North Carolina played last night I want to make sure we talk about North Carolina cuz I I th- this is like the one uh Frankly, this is like the one game that I've watched so far in the in the early. Literature. I tried to watch a little bit of the Michigan State uh, exhibition. And I was like, yeah, I'll just. I don't think I'll that throw, was yeah, one you could learn a lot was, from. It was yeah. NFL Sunday, and I was like, I'll just throw it back to the NFL. Um, but I was watching Carolina Memphis, and uh, the overreactions are Seth Trimble's winning Player of the Year, and I don't in every conference and every yes, <laughs> he's, of course, he's national, big, national he's my Big Ten Player of the Year, my <laughs> ACC uh, National Player of the Year. Um, but I, I think uh, with no R.J. Davis, like I do think that that was actually a pretty – if I was a Carolina fan, I'd be pretty fired up about J- the, the Cadeau-Jalen Washington pick and roll was incredible. Seth Trimble, who's been a pretty good defender from what I've seen from his career, like he's he was scoring at will against a decent Memphis team. I never know what to make of Memphis teams because they do have – they have names you know and they have talent, but it's also like – this the story feels familiar with Penny, um, and it's October exhibition game. It was sloppy basketball. We know all that, but still, I I don't think I want to overreact in a bad way um, to these exhibitions. But I do think if you're a Carolina fan after what you saw, without your best player who might be the best player in the country, um, and to go on a road in an October situation where you're everybody's new and you're still figuring all this shit out and it's really sloppy and you still beat Memphis and you do it with a guy and Seth Trimble that scores 33 points. And Cadeau's hitting threes, and they're going under ball screens, and he's like, that was last year, buddy. Watch yeah. this. I could shoot now. I'm one of the guys that the practice report was right about. Like, uh, I added a jumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I don't know. I was pretty fired up for Carolina after after last night, but yeah, I'd maybe be, I'm overreacting. I'd be very encouraged if I were Carolina. Like, it's not you're going to win the ACC again. I, I wouldn't paint yourself into the Final Four, but the freshman played poorly, and Davis wasn't there, and you still won by – I mean, it was – a 10 point game pretty much all the second half until they got a little bit sloppy late and turned it over. But like, that means that Jalen Washington played well. Trimble played well. Mm -hmm. Like Lubin isn't some weakness in the paint. Tyson wasn't completely exposed as a defender. Like a lot of the things you're probably hoping to see out of that group went well. And without your, you know, top line ceiling raisers of Davis and the, and the freshman, you have to feel pretty good that that's your bedrock. If that's your floor performance, that's not bad. Now, I would whisper Memphis fired all three assistants like three weeks ago. Right, right, and so maybe they were a little sloppy and lazy and really, really bad on defense, if, if I'm being honest they were, about yeah. it. But, they were, but. I, I think there's still a lot of encouraging takeaways for, for Tar Heel fans there for sure. Yeah, I uh, I was worried that North Carolina might just be R.J. Davis and everybody else type team, and I guess that's the encouragement is that it's probably still going to, by the time like February rolls around, it might resemble that. And Hubert finds his new Iron Five, and uh, God. <laughs> I can't stand that. <laughs> and they just hear Iron fights the Iron Five all over again. Um, I don't know who they would, who would the five be? Cado, Cado, and Trimble, and and, and Trimble's yeah. starting now. He's got to start. Cado yeah. and Trimble, they got to run three guards out there. Washington's going to be the big man, and then it's just like, is it Withers or Tyson? I guess. <sighs> I, I mean, I go Tyson because he can shoot the lights shoot out. Shoot there, yeah. He I, didn't even I, shoot well last night, but yeah, he can shoot. Yeah, when he I just going. I laugh at Withers. I feel like he's just he's so confident, and I'm not sure why, but he is so confident. <laughs> he had a drive late. It, the, the shot from the Bama game will always stand out. Yeah, but uh, hey, he doesn't need to be that guy because they've clearly got a, a bunch of other dudes who can get get buckets. Um, they're both going to play in the Mount Invitational, by the way, Memphis and Carolina. That's right. I book my I book my trip. I'm excited, Jim. I saw I'm you. I saw you at one Maui. We got, we got you, jealous. I know we got to get you back out there. I would love to. Yes. I mean, there's just there's nothing. As is it all 
all clear report size with like the fires and as far as i know yeah that's what i that's what i've been told but we'll i mean i don't know what the i'm I'm sure they're still putting the damage back together but the the um the tournament is is going to schedule and i'm so excited for it that uh iowa state here are the teams i'm gonna read the bracket to everybody as a reminder memphis will play uconn in game one uh (laughs) intrigue to say the least the (laughs) two-time defending champions and a versus penny hardaway and a uh but there, but there are guys. If you follow college basketball, like Memphis has guys people know, Dane Danger and, and Tyrese Hunter and um, Haggerty will be a Haggerty. Very Haggerty will be that. yeah. Haggerty yep. was awesome for him last night, and you'll know him by the end of the year if you if you don't already. Uh, Michigan State plays Colorado. Colorado's gonna be dog shit, right? I don't know how Tom Izzo bad. got that draw. Like yeah. Colorado's the clear eight seed in this tournament, yeah. and Michigan State's like the five. I didn't realize <laughs> how I didn't realize how bad they were gonna be till the bracket came out, and I got excited, and then I dug into all the teams, and I was like, oh, Colorado's not supposed to be good at all. Um, but maybe they surprise. I don't know. Probably not. But <laughs> yeah, that's what Tad, uh, Tad Boyle's better than you think he's gonna be when they're bad, and he's worse not than as you good. think. He's yeah, right. When they're, when they're good. Um, we have Auburn, Iowa State. Which, as the third game which rules That's so good fantastic and Dayton North Carolina is the the final game and then obviously the winners all play each other everybody knows how tournaments work but uh so that means number five number three number five number nine number 11 and you're just that, naming you're just saying odd numbers right now yeah I guess I'm right yeah. <laughs> all those all those teams are in there I think Dayton's Dayton's good yeah um, like 27th in Ken Pond. and Michigan State so Dayton Michigan State and and Memphis are the three that are not ranked but are still pretty good I think or, or like interesting it could 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 make this interesting. I don't know I'm so I'm so excited for this Maui invitation yeah that's that's why I just like how did Izzo pull this off where it, Michigan State should be flipped with either Iowa State or Auburn like you have two top Ten teams playing each other <laughs> in the right. opening round. Why is that happening? Well, maybe yeah. Dan Hurley pulled this off, and he gets to play. That could be the winner of Michigan State, Colorado, and he's like, "This is this don't is awesome. don't disrespect yeah, me. Yeah, you put yeah, all the yeah, other top yeah, ten teams right. on the other side of the bracket. It's the only way I'll tolerate it." Um, talk to me about Auburn a little bit. Auburn, uh, Bruce Pearl has has always found a way to. Um, like last year, I don't think people were super high on Auburn and Janai Broom and and. Uh, the rest of the gang, like they, they ended up being a pretty good team. They lose the yell in the first round of the tournament, but uh, it, it was it, it was a, it was a season that exceeded expectations going in. Um, I think people have caught up now to like we can't. Bruce Pearl's done a good job of what Dan Hurley has done, where it's like no matter who I have or whatever. Matt Painter's earned that right as well. It seems like where people are just like you know what, fuck it, I'm done overthinking this. Uh, Bruce Pearl's Janai Broomback, done. You're going to the what were they ranked ninth, eleventh. 11th you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be ranked 11th we're gonna ask no more questions um here's one question i'm gonna ask you though because the last couple years auburn's guards have been a problem uh every time i watch auburn i'm like i i like the idea of this team i think uh janai broom could be the best player in the country this year uh jabari smith could have been the best player in the country a couple years. like they have unbelievable t- but then push comes to shove and you you count on the guards to not shit down their legs and it just doesn't happen give me confidence that auburn is going to be actually good and is not going to choke in the NCAA tournament. All right, point one, Katie Johnson plays for George Mason now. Okay. Instead of Auburn. So that's <laughs> that's where we're starting. We're starting with uh, a guy that's like maybe the most erratic player in the entire It's country. really – maybe when I say Auburn guards, I just mean Katie Johnson, you as could, it turns out. That could, could just be what I mean. Could be part of it. Um, and Aiden Holloway was un- underwhelming a little as a freshman last yeah. year. Couldn't shoot as, as expected. So they bring in two actual, uh, we like to say, adults in the room, like J.P. Pegues from Furman. He's obviously had a big moment mm-hmm. in the NCAA tournament already, the, the big shot to beat Virginia. He's a perfect pearl guard because he's fantastic pull-up shooter, pretty good in ball screens. I think that's going to work well, uh, a pairing with Broom, and Pearl just gives his guys like all freedom to pull up, yeah. and, and we've seen that go poorly with certain players, but I think it's going to go very well with Pegues. Uh, Miles Kelly, a, a kind of under the radar addition from Georgia Tech, is a, another adult ish in the room on the wing. And then I, I think Baker Mazzara is going to have a big year. And, and you mentioned the loss to Yale. And I, I think they beat Yale by 10 if Baker Mazzara doesn't, doesn't get kicked out. He doesn't get kicked out of the game. Three minutes or whatever <laughs> it was. Uh, he really became uh, awesome for them on a, on a per minute basis. And when they played him bigger minutes loads, he was yeah. probably their second best player. I, I, I think this team is going to be fantastic. I, my One of my hot takes I've been sitting on all offseason is that they're going to be slightly better than Bama, which I think no one, no one agrees with. I'm picking Auburn to win the SEC, but... Um, Ken Palm does. Yeah. Well, Auburn, Auburn three. He's copying my homework. I know. You know his, his computer is copying my homework, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, Bama's obviously loaded. They, they bring back the guys from the Final Four, but I think Auburn was better than them start to finish last year. And with Broom back, I mean, you put him up there with like Kalkbrenner and Dickinson, yeah. and these fifth-year big men that come back, and we know they're going to anchor a good program. He might be the best of the bunch. I just would like to see him play more than 25 minutes a game. Maybe we get him up around yeah, 30. He's yeah. really good. <laughs> where where are we drawing the line then on national champion um, contenders in the preseason? Which, again, is – I'll just say this, like preseason has become impossible. I don't know if you feel this way, but it really has become I can I can figure out teams I like like Gonzaga and Iowa State are two teams that are more or less the same as they were last year. Like they feel pretty similar to what they were last year. I have a pretty good idea of what to expect from both of those teams. Uh Kansas is sort of on the fence. Like they bring enough of their quarterback that I know and and I guess the transfers are bringing in. I know um, all these schools are hitting the transfer portal. A lot of the, a lot of these teams are going to throw starting fives out there that I know and I've seen play at other schools, but I haven't seen play together. And the preseason has become impossible to um, forecast like how all these pieces are going to fit, and it's it's extremely frustrating. Uh, it was already hard enough, but now it's become even harder to like. You you just don't know. You just don't know like what like the the example I used last week was when Kansas brings in Timberlake last year and they're like he's going to be our shooter for us and uh, it was, it, do I have that right that yeah, it was Cam it was him and Cam Spencer and they were like we're going to take the Timberlake and then yeah. Cam Spencer goes to UConn and Timberlake gets the yips and yeah and gets the, the yeah, yeah. There. Uh, you just don't know like what's going to happen with this sort of thing and it becomes very difficult having said all that enough with the preamble let's pretend like we know uh, where where are we drawing the line in terms of national title contenders in your eyes looking at the AP poll, which maybe there are some that, like, you know, in the middle of the pack you'd flip guys around or whatever. But, like, like Arizona at 10, Auburn at 11, you're high on Auburn. You think Auburn's in the mix? Do you I, think I was, it's, like, the top 11? That's I was gonna line? I was going to draw it at Auburn, and then there's one team outside of there that I would, like, shoehorn in as a national title contender. We can get to them in a second. But, yeah, w 1 through 11 there I think could all probably do it. I mean, basically every one of those teams has either – like you said, the Gonzaga, Iowa State, we know they were awesome last year. They're probably going to be a little bit better this year, so you've got incremental improvement. Or they have a star, like Mark Sears, R.J. Yeah. Davis. Baylor's pretty loaded. Maybe Arizona can't with, with Caleb Love, but you know that's that's a whole other Yeah, discussion. Arizona's not – I don't trust Arizona to win six games, but – Yeah. I trust – yeah. But I like I think Houston is the favorite, personally. Um, I, I'm a big, big fan of Houston going into this year. And Carolina, like if if Trimble's that good, and Washington is actually a legitimate starting center, the way he looked against yeah. Memphis, what what's that team really missing? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. So do you want to hear my wild card? Tell me the wild card. They're not even ranked in the AP poll. Hold on, let me try to guess who it's going to be. I bet it takes you one guess. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Well, is it Illinois? It's not Illinois. It's St. St. John's. That's, oh, that's the, the second one. They, one? Okay. Yeah. I, I just I, I think St. John's could have a top five defense. Like they're they're super long. They've got a shot blocker. They've got a terror on the ball in Richmond and, and Davon Smith's kind of like that too. It sounds like Patino's actually excited about them. Whereas last year, you know, every press conference was Ugh, I have to coach these guys. Can you believe it? It's like, well, you you recruited them. But, is he excited about them, or is he want to coach Kentucky? Well, yeah. <laughs> he does seem like he'd prefer to coach. Kentucky. That was crazy. That Can we was... just take a time? Like, I like we'll talk about St. John's in a second. Can we just acknowledge? That was insane. I haven't done a show since then. I know at this point, uh, I was going to ask. It's, if been, you've it's been a little while this, since but... that happened, but uh, well, I haven't I haven't done my show since then. That um. I'm a Patino guy. I, I when he when he left Louisville, I was mocking him as much as anyone else. And uh, it, but I I've, I've been on record as saying I think he's f pound for pound the best basketball coach maybe that's ever lived. I think that like Rick Patino is um, just a fucking basketball genius, and I, I I'm so happy that he's back in college basketball. But that was bizarre to say the least. I I thought it was like a Photoshop or something when I first saw like a photo on my on my Twitter time. I was like, "What is what is happening here?" I mean, if you're a St. John's player, were you like, "I know, dude"? There's there's a way to go. Like, I, I don't need to explain to me what he was thinking or why he did it. He's a Mark Pope guy. Mark Pope is taking over. I think there when when Mark Pope was hired at Kentucky, there were a lot of people both in Lexington and like nationally that are like, I mean it's Kentucky. I feel like they could do better than Mark Pope. Um, the people that know Mark Pope well are like, no, this guy's awesome and a uh, big energy guy and loves Kentucky. And like, it, it makes a lot of sense. So um, Rick Patino's like, I'm going to, I'm going to help my guy out. 
I'm gonna throw my weight behind the big his first big blue madness and and get him going and and do what I can to make sure that he's set up for success. It all makes sense except for the fact that he's a head coach <laughs> at a completely different pro. And it's not like he's a head coach at a a tiny school or like a you know, uh, like an FCS type level school where like in Iona, like where he was before, which right. is like that no would have felt that would have felt different. No disrespect to Iona, but like Iona and Kentucky are kind of playing different games. They might meet in the NCAA tournament, but they're they're operating on different levels, and Iona knows that. St. John's and, and Kentucky theoretically are operating on the same level. Yeah, and the head coach was I thought it was crazy, and and he, and what he could have he could have like gone and appeared and and just like. Just like, offered his support. I'm, yeah, I'm here in the background. It's like no, he was a he, he was wore a main quarters. Character. It. He yeah. gave a yeah. speech to the crowd. He's yeah. doing interviews. He's he's speaking to the team the next day. It was crazy. Yeah, I, and that the fact that it was like the next day that was as after practice had already started. He's still there, I think. Like, yeah, I think he's still there. I think he's like <laughs> he's not running. He's St. on John's staff. Practices. Yeah. yeah. If it was in the summer and like okay, we don't have workouts. Our players are all back home. I'm going to go hang out at Kentucky right. for a couple of days. That feels so different than. Hey guys, we have morning practice today and then night, night practice tomorrow because yeah. I got to do thirty six hours. Yeah, right, of right. Like I, I, I couldn't believe it. It's it like was crazy. Said, I've never. It, yeah. If there's one coach that could get away with it, it's Rick Pitino, just because. I mean, the the man already coached at Kentucky and then ended up being a coach at Louisville. And, and Kentucky fans welcome him back. Yeah, the Kentucky that, fans. Well, it's all very confusing. That guy finds a way to like skirt every sort of thing that we thought was. Um, a faux pas or whatever else. He's like, I'm, I'm Rick Pitino. I'm going to do what I want. And then we're all like, all right, I guess, I guess kind of, I don't know. I guess I, even, even all the shit that goes down to Louisville and everything else at the end of the day, I, I do still like the guy. So it's like, I, he, 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 everything he does, it seems crazy to me. And then enough time passes and I'm like, I don't know, man, I still like him. I can't, I can't help myself. I still yeah, think I, time heals all yeah. wounds, man. Time heals um, all Pitino wounds. So I'm sure I'll look back on it in a year and be like, yeah, whatever. It was pretty funny that he was there. But like, I, 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 I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I was yeah. watching Big Blue Madness. Um, oh, wait, am I crazy that I that I think they they could theoretically win a national title? Is that too much? Uh, who is St. John's? Yeah, just, I, with with Richmond with the defense, I think their offense. No, I, I, I like I said, I th I think Rick Pitino is is a G like they have the talent, and Rick Pitino has the the coaching ability. I I nobody's ever been. Um, been able to get more out of their guys to me than Rick Pitino through the years. Like he's just been, and and when you when you give him talent, he's he's unbelievable. I couldn't believe they weren't ranked for that reason. Where like yeah. a human looking at it is like Rick Pitino talent, eh, yeah, honorable mention, right? Like that that just seems like the logical in a in a human poll. Like I get why they're low in in Ken Palm. That, that's not I'm not gonna whine about that. But I figured the human bias yeah. would would have them. Actually, they're 19th in Ken Palm. They're higher per computers. I'm I would never have expected humans to be lower on Pitino than. Yeah, computers. Which makes uh, that that's what always made Patino getting fired at Louisville or, or getting caught up in a recruiting scandal thing so funny to me was that he had all of his success with with like unheralded guys. He wasn't landing five stars like crazy, and then he he got Brian Bowen, and then he did a, a radio interview, and he's like, "That was the easiest recruitment of my life." I don't know how that, and ultimately it was a five star that took him down when he won a national title with like Russ Smith and Peyton Siva and like a, Luke Hancock and like these dudes that yeah. were diamonds in the rough that he found um and then he, he lands like one five star i know he had others but uh it really felt like the first time he started like dabbling and actually getting the duke and kentucky type caliber recruits <laughs> he's like the only one that got trouble shouldn't do that how dare you stick to how what you know you. yeah uh no I, i'm i'm with you on that i i uh i think i agree i i'm trying to think of where i would draw the line arizona i, I would do i i don't know about auburn arizona um I'm, I'm trying to think of who else in the mix. I feel so confident that, sorry to the fans of these teams, but like we get to 13, 14, 15, like Texas A&M is not going to win a yeah, national Texas, title this year. I don't, I don't think Tennessee. I think Tennessee feels a little overrated to me. I don't. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I like Rick Barnes, and you know, for doing like the whole trust the coach and he knows what he's doing type thing. It's like I, it's nothing against him and his program, and he's he's sort of figured some stuff out. But um, I don't think the guy Siegler is good enough for me to. For you to be like, yeah, they guys like high Ziegler. Yeah, he doesn't elevate them like yeah, connect. Like, okay, so and unless someone comes out of the woodwork and apparently out of practice, Milicic has been really good. This, yeah. this big guy Igor, but uh, I don't think they're going to be in no that tier. At the, at the, yeah, they're taking a big step back as a yep. program this year. I think um, Baylor's interesting to me. I think they're, I think they're a national title good, but um, they for a team that won a national title a couple years ago and did it so convincingly. 
against a team that was undefeated in the national championship and just beat the hell out of them. Um, I don't want to say they've fallen off as a program, but they I think they've taken a step back in nat- national relevance where I think people forget about Baylor, and I think this could be a year where they reannounce. They, they've had they've had good teams. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, like, um, I haven't trusted the defense. I haven't trusted, yeah. like, the culture of, of toughness that they had because the, the way they won their national title was just being some fucking dogs on defense. And then they had guys – your Jared Butler that could shoot, and uh, uh, Cryer was on the he was on the Baylor team, right? Yeah, I think he's on, team. on the bench. Um, they they had shooters as well, but like their their DNA was the defense, and I don't think they've had that the last few years. And I don't I'm I'm I I'm still in wait and see mode with that part of it, but uh, I'm I am waiting for the Baylor resurgence, the 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 reminder that they are in fact uh, one of the premier programs in the country, and they're they start ranked eighth in the country um, in the preseason poll, but. Uh, yeah, they're they're a team that I'm gonna have my eye on because the the freshman kid Edgecomb, he's so good, so good. Yeah, I love that guy. <laughs> I, well, some of the stuff he did with the Bahamas in the in the off yeah. season where he was playing with Aiton and uh, Buddy Heald, and it was like, yeah, he's as good as them. Yeah, he he's just, he he's gonna right be nasty. To uh, I I like Jeremy Roach. I think I th- I thought he was good at Duke, and um, you know, he's never as good as what I think he was supposed to be. But I, he's he, I think he's a really good college basketball player. So it, Drew, just like, the one thing I think that's maybe hurt him, and we talked about it a little with UConn, is he he keeps getting assistance picked picked away. Right, like right. Tang, I think was a big one to lose, especially around the defensive side of the ball, where the last two years they've been bad and Kansas State's been good defensively and you start to think maybe Tang had a lot to do with why they were so good on that end of the court and then this offseason they lose Jacus uh, John Jacus went to Florida Atlantic placed Dusty May mm-hmm. he is reputationally the offensive guru or, or one of the masterminds behind the offense and so like does that take a step back yeah. even though they are clearly loaded with with talent um, so he's basically he's lost his offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator from the national title team yeah in the last yeah. couple of years there's there's yeah. another assistant who left recently i'm forgetting so i'm sure baylor fans will, will remind me and yell at me but uh the problem is i i adore the roster like rob wright this freshman point guard that's coming in is like the perfect oh he was just too small that's why he's only rated 20th he yeah. should he should really be like a top 10 recruit so you pair him with edgecomb with with roach with uh with Jaden nunn back I don't know if Omir is going to solve the defensive issues in the paint, but I know he's yeah. good at basketball. He's, he's so you have a bunch of guys that you know it, it can fill the statue. They can score as long as they get some stops. I, I think they fit right there as an eight. Yeah, Omir eight defensively, we'll see. But um, the Final Four Miami team, there were many times where I was like, North Shadow Omir might be their best player. And yeah. I can't forget that. I That's can't for yeah. Isaiah Wong and Jordan yeah. Miller. It's like no, nah, they might. Nigel might Pack. Yeah, they they were. But Omir was like the straw that stirred the drink. We still using that? He's the carpet the that star, tied, the, tied the room tied together. Tied the room together. Yeah. yeah. Um, is, is straw that stirs the drink a compliment? Yeah, that's like the the is, guy that it, he's the initiator, right? I thought I Tip think so, spear. but I don't know if that's like a <laughs> like when you call a quarterback a game manager, that's always like not a compliment. <laughs> yeah. But but the only guys they ever say that about are guys that are winning football games. You know what I mean? It's, like it's always it's the, I don't know how you're winning, but, but you you're, are. But you are winning, so, so it, this is what you become. But it's like every time someone uses it, they're obviously using it as an insult. Um, and I feel like straw that stirs the drink is, yeah. But that means you're. That doesn't mean you're just. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. You might not be the best player, but you're one that is important for setting the tone. What I'm trying to say is Norchad Omir, uh, I know it seems crazy, but there were times where I watched him and I'm like, honestly, if there's one guy on this Miami team that they can't afford to lose, it might be him because of his versatility and all of that. And and it was a team that with Isaiah Wong and Jordan Miller and Nigel Pack and guys that are quote unquote more talented than him. And yet uh, I couldn't forget him. So uh, yeah, I, the, B- Baylor's super interesting to me for, for that reason. Um what else, Duke? We haven't talked about Duke. We haven't talked about Cooper Flag. Yep. Um, I have. I I could not be more in on the hype around a kid. Um, I could not be more in on, not just the idea that he's going to be the number one pick, but I really, I said this a couple months ago, and it, it's only gotten heightened since then. That I I think it's a Zion type season incoming where when I don't know what to talk about on the show, I'm just going to talk about what Cooper flag did last night and how awesome it looked. And, uh, I think like, frankly, Duke's season hinges on if he is as awesome as he is billed to be, they 
could very easily win a national title. Um, and if he's not and he just ends up being pretty good, uh, they might be in some trouble. Um, yeah, relying on a freshman to that level is is not always a fun spot to be in for a college basketball team, but he seems – I I have yet to see a single thing that, that gives me pause on him being anything short of miraculously good. Did I did – I, is that good? Was that a good quote that we could <laughs> – yeah, yeah. I've not seen one. anything. Lock that one in. Miraculously good. Like he's just I, I every clip I like he can score from every level. He's got the attitude. He's got the competitive drive. He's got the um he's got it like the skill set's unreal. You can put the ball in the deck. He's got the size. Am I wrong in this? No, I, I don't think I think so. he's the best I, player in the country, and if he's not preseason first team all American, that seems crazy to me. Yeah, I've ranked him top five. We did a we did a player list. I think he's I think I had him second, maybe. Uh he's ridiculous I, I think defense is where he's like head and shoulders above a lot of people a lot of prospects coming out at his age I mean he's still young for a freshman because he's yeah. in class but he's outrageous on that end and then like you see so many clips of, of the offense it looks good in practice it looks good in the uh team USA scrimmages right. and stuff like whether those you know the NBA guys are going all out or not like he looked fine there it wasn't like ah there's the scrawny 17 year old that they're trying to make make it happen there and no he he looked like he belonged and i think it's nice that they're not going to have to bank on him for scoring like he doesn't have to score 20 a game for the right. elite if he puts up 16 and 7 with fantastic defense they're going to get points from proctor from foster from some of the transfers from knipple who's apparently an absolute yeah. monster i'm sure you saw the jonathan Gimoni like hype machine I did. I did. I, I hesitate because that hype machine two years ago was Tyrese Proctor's the best freshman on Duke, yeah, and then it was that, yeah. very obviously Filipowski. Yeah. So I'm pumping the brakes a little bit on it. But Mason Gillis is going to have like at least at least one, I think probably three big games for them. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think played Mason, in big games. You know, I think Mason Gillis is going to have. I'm going to predict that right now. There's going to be multiple games this season where Mason Gillis plays like 13 minutes and hits three or four threes. <laughs> just just gets the camera yeah. crowd going. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, he shot like 50% from three last year. Yeah. And people are like, well, he had Zach Eady. He was open all the time. He's going to be open a lot he's playing be with open Cooper a Flag lot. and Proctor and Foster and all them. Like, he's never going to be the number one option on the scouting report. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'm i I'm all in on the, the Cooper Flag hype. Cause the, the, not to make everything about Ohio State football, but the <laughs> – the analogy I would use is Jeremiah Smith is wide receiver on Ohio State. He's That's a, a he's freak. He's freak. He's seventeen too, right? Or seventeen? Yeah. So he's he's eighteen. Seven, he's eighteen. Ryan Williams is the one That's on the Bama. One seventeen. Bama. But um, all off season coming out of Columbus, everything I would read about Ohio State football was on, on a season when they had just lost Marvin Harrison Jr., um, who was you know this run of Ohio State receivers. He was the cream of the crop. He's better than all of them. Uh, they just lose Marvin Harrison Jr. And this new kid, Jeremiah Smith, comes in. And everybody that was going to practice and everybody that was at the facility was just talking about this kid is going to be the best receiver Ohio State has ever seen. And and I kept waiting all summer and all, like, as as we got into the fall practices and, the, and right up to the very first game, I kept waiting for anybody, just one voice, to push back and be like, we're putting a little too much on this kid too fast, <laughs> right? Um, and even as the games have been going on, you see these guys that are – typically pretty measured with their takes and all that sort of thing. Every time they talk about Jeremiah Smith, like he could be playing on Sundays right now. If I was, you know, if I was doing a draft, I might consider him taking him one right now. Like you're just saying all this crazy shit that in my mind, when you say this about guys, there's always, always a segment of people that are like, we're putting way too much on him. Uh, I need to see him do it against this sort of competition. I need to, there's always a little bit of a pushback. And the whole reason of talking about Jeremiah Smith is that all the people that are hyping him up, as it turns out, were exactly correct. Like he's, 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 he is that good. Cooper flag has the exact same amount of hype to me. We're like, if, if he wasn't as good as he is made out to be, there would be some voice that was at the USA thing that was like, Oh, he's good, man. Now you, he, let's relax. Let's remember he is an 18 year old and, and there's seven, you know, he's 17. I think he's 17. He's 17. He's, he's, he's a young kid. He's got, you know, but he is, boy, he's showing a lot of pro Like there's a way to say, is there a way to not shit on him, but also kind of put the messaging out there that like, it's a work in progress. And like, he's got a little things to work on or whatever. I've not seen any of it. No. I've not seen any of it at all. Every single thing about Cooper flag is like, God damn. Yeah. And like, <laughs> he's good. In every scenario he's performed, he's been fantastic. Like the, any, any 
ABCD camper. That's not even a thing anymore, is it? But like Nike Hoop Summit is great. About, yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> no, I, I, show my age. You, you, could, you could convince me it was still going on. Just um, yeah. But like at Montverde, his team was undefeated. They were loaded. He had, he had great teammates. Yeah. But he was the best player on the team. Anybody who watched was like, that's the best player for the best team in high school basketball. When he didn't play with those guys, he was playing with Maine United and Peach Jam. He put like 32, 15, mm -hmm. six blocks a game. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I see it as the star, as the complimentary uh, like leader of great teammates, leader of bad teammates. He's He's been good in every setting. I see no reason why he will be this is a, amazing. I'm going to say this too. I think this is a legacy year for John Shire in so far as um, if – I think Cooper Flag's going to be so good that we'll look back on how far he goes in the tournament. And, and if they don't – they have to make at least a Sweet 16. I did, I I'm did. trying to think of, like, to. what – like, in the same way that Rick Barnes, it's like – Barnes they, Durant. Yeah, yep. Barnes Durant. Rick Barnes had Kevin Durant and lost by 20 almost in the second round, I think. Yeah. I forget how much they lost by. Let me pull that up. Let me was, get it, was it to the Mayo team? Is that uh, it was to USC. I think it I was don't know if May I don't know if Mayo was there yet. I think it was – Taj, no, it wasn't 2006. Was it Taj on that team? That's the wrong. Was it 2007? Um, it was 2007. Yeah, it was 2007. And I think Mayo was the next year. You're right. Texas, Nick Young, Taj Gibson. Taj Gibson. Gabe Pruitt. What are they? Gabe Pruitt. Yeah. What did they lose by? Uh, 10. No, wait, sorry. 19. 19, yeah. Yeah. I was close. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the same way that that's something that if you don't like Rick Barnes, you never stop talking about how he had DJ Augustine and Kevin Durant and lost by 20 in the second round. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's... That's how good Cooper Flag's going to be. And Shire can't fuck this up. Yeah, I mean, it was like uh, the design Coach K team, like you knew he was that good. It's like this is a kind of a disappointment if they don't make the Final Four and then is own yeah. Cassius Winston, Kenny Goins makes some crazy Kenny shot <laughs> yeah. to beat them in the, in the Elite Eight. And it felt like an underwhelming disappointment because he was that good. And there's a chance uh, Flag is that good. I, yeah, I'm fired up. The Mark Titus Show is brought to you by Jack Black. Jack Black just came out with four new scents of their number one deodorant, Pit Boss. Their deodorant is the best at controlling odor and wetness no matter what I'm doing. And now I can have my cleanser, lotion, and antiperspirant all in my favorite scent, which is a total game changer. Jack Black's original Pit Boss deodorant is a top seller. And now you can get the same reliable odor and wetness protection in four new masculine scents. Big Sur offers a refreshing aroma that mixes marine, accord, and amber. Blue Midnight features adventurous notes of black pepper and lavender. Jack Zen presents a grounding blend of bamboo and and Violet, I'm a big Sir guy. Uh, I've they they sent me all the uh, different samples, but I I was using Jack Black before they came came on as a sponsor, so I'm excited about this. But um, the Big Sir is is unreal. And this 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 point about the you you, you get all your scents lined up. This is important, and this is a this is something I wish I knew way earlier in life. Is that you think you're smelling good because you're using a bunch of different products that smell different and but they're all smelling good in their own ways. When you put them together, it's confusing and it doesn't really work. You need to you need to stick to one scent. And thankfully, Jack Black has found a way uh, to let you have your 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 lotions, your cleansers, all of it. One favorite scent. You find your scent you like, and that's what you smell like, and you move forward with your day. Jack Black was founded over 20 years ago with the goal of offering men's body care products that were just as effective as women's body care products. Their commitment to superior skin care has made Jack Black According to Circana, the number one men's body care brand by total dollar sales. If you want simple, effective products that do what they say they're going to do, you need Jack Black. Get to head to getjackblack.com slash Titus and use code Titus for 10% off of your order and free shipping. Once again, it is getjackblack.com backslash Titus, T-I-T-U-S, for 10% off of your order plus free shipping. And make sure you use promo code Titus. It is my name right there, T-I-T-U-S. So they know I sent you Jack Black. Get Black. Get JackBlack.com. Gonzaga, Iowa State are two teams that uh, are bring back everybody type teams. That's the way you. And then if you're, if you're condensing it down to one bullet point, you're like they were good last year. They bring back everybody. Yeah, it's, that's basically you know, Ohio State changes the front or Iowa State changes the front court, but their guards are yeah fantastic. the guards you know and love. Gonzaga are back. just drops the like firecracker the, into the equation of Caleb Battle. We're like yeah. This kind of fiery wing that can get his own bucket that they clearly did not have last year. Yeah. And maybe he's the one that kind of raises the ceiling from what five seed they were last year and made Sweet 16 to yeah. like top six team. They ended up they ended up better. They, they started real slow. I don't need to remind you, but they were I, – I remember having the conversations like they might miss the tournament. And then yeah. they came on strong. So I think that's the that's the excitement around Gonzaga and explains their number six, uh, six ranking is – 
they they ended the season pretty strongly, even though I think they lost the same areas a couple of times down the stretch. But um, yeah, beat uh beat Kansas in the second round. Obliterated. Yeah, obliterated. Kansas, it was which, a second. That was the second round. Yeah, that wasn't the Sweet Sixteen. That was the second round. Yeah, five four game. Real? Can we? We didn't fully hit Kansas. I want to. I want to ask. We you didn't. About well, let's talk about Kansas. That's the. They're the number one team. We did not talk about them. And they. You mentioned that it's like, oh, does it feel like deja vu with last year? And I like the thing that was so cool about them last year. What I think made them scary was they had three unreal defenders with Adams, with Harris, and with McCuller. McCuller gets hurt. The defense gets leaky. Dickinson's mm-hmm. lack of foot speed gets a little more exposed. I don't think AJ Store fixes that. I know. I mean, he, he adds some offense, but I I saw like a quote from Media Day that Bill Self said like Zeke Mayo has been, he's a starter. Like I think he's going to start over Store. It seemed like maybe just a kick in the pants to Store. Store, yeah. Uh, that that would be how I would I would perceive it. But I don't think they're going to have the same kind of defense, even with Harrison Adams back. And yeah. can the offense explode enough to be the number one team in the country? I, I don't know. I know the the, the Kansas thing is. Uh, Number one, McCuller was their best player, and I said this on a show not too long ago. But but Hunter Dickinson won all the awards, and and McCuller was was unbelievable defensively. He was unbe- he, he carried them offensively. I, I don't understand how he McCuller wasn't didn't play. Why was he not an All American? I don't understand. I don't understand why Hunter got all the votes for for all the awards. But uh, whatever. Um, what 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 ruined them last year was they had four players. <laughs> And Furphy had his moments when he came on late, like late in the season. I mean, not late in games, but he he late in the season he kind of emerged as like starter number four and a half for them, and like he would have stretches or he looked like the guy they they were hoping he would be. But um, they just didn't have any depth. And to me, the one thing that I I feel confident about with Kansas this year is that the guys they brought in, they basically with Ryland Griffin and AJ Store and Zeke Mayo, you don't need all three of them to hit. In the way that they kind of needed, they needed Furphy and Timberlake to hit, and yep. and when they didn't, and then McCuller gets hurt, and then Hunter was banged up throughout the year and had the shoulder thing. Um, they were just they were just depleted, and I don't even think even if they had all their guys, I don't even know how good they actually would have been. Uh, so I, I that that's the thing to me is like I th- I think that some combination of those three guys they're bringing in will make up for McCuller, and they'll they'll be able to like piece it together, but. What promises were made to AJ Store when when you know he put pen to paper to to take the bag to go to Kansas and and what are, what are what promises are made to Ryland Griffin and all that sort of thing and what what NIL deals and who that sort of shit is um, something that we need to monitor a little more but I think their depth is going to be better uh, I trust their offense a little more I just you're right though the defense Hunter. Hunter I'm a broken record. I talk about Hunter way too much on the show, but like he's for a guy who's who's AP first team All American and 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 all that sort of thing. Like for him to be a liability defensively, um, in ball screens and and a guy that other teams are purposely trying to attack, it is. It, it it's kind of like it's it, it's a thing you can't ignore if, if when you're talking about Kansas. It's like it, you you can't I I can't take a team super seriously as a national title contender if your best player. I don't want to say it's unplayable, but there are stretches where it's like, I don't know if I want him out there. Yeah, he and, gets picked on. Well, yeah, that's, he gets that, picked. Like that's crazy to say that. Like we're the number one team in the country. We have a guy who's a first team All American, and that's the guy that gets picked on. Yeah, it's, and it's it. That, I mean, that, you're splitting hairs when you're talking about number one in the country. Like maybe they're number five. So it's not like, man, with Hunter Dickinson, Kansas can never make a Sweet Sixteen or something. Like of course they can, but I, I think it's a actual flaw that is going to come up and to me prevent them from being number one now uh, there's there's few coaches i would trust more than self to put it all together like you said with the new options they had the guys they brought in there's going to be more offensive pop like mcculler for all his you know talents and stuff was not like a great shooter Mm -hmm. not an awesome one-on-one scorer now they've got a little bit more of that on the roster but i i think there's just going to be some ups and downs with them and to your point like even with mcculler they weren't in the top Ken uh, top ten of Ken Palm from December on. Like really, even with, yeah, that, all through January, that, February, yeah. they're like fifteenth. Like they weren't playing like a a top ten team analytically, and that's despite being like fifteen and two. They were eighteenth. So I, I think it's a little farther of a, a leap from where they were last year to get from twenty fifth or or even just fifteenth in Ken Palm to number one with the ones that with the guys that got. I, I, I'm a Houston man. I I, I like their depth more. 
And that's what gives me confidence is that I, I thought, of course, the defense, there were problems and, and the offense would be clunky at times. And there were there were X's and O's, very obvious X's and O's problems. But I think if I had to pick one thing to just boil down to what Kansas' biggest problem was last year, I would just say depth. I would yeah. say the depth was the issue and they just didn't have enough horses to, to tinker with line. Like you, you, you're you stuck when you're watching their offense and it is clunky and they, they, they don't flow well together at all. Um and you're like, I wish we could fix this, but where are we going to turn on the bench? To yeah. we, we don't have any other options. At, at some point, they had to have El Marco Jackson or Timberlake on the court. Right. They, those were one of the five, and no I, matter what. And I think this year, I still have like the X's and O's types questions of what uh, what is their defensive stopper lineup going to look like? What is it going to look like when they want to play small ball? What is it going to look like? Like I, I still want to see what all that will look like, but I trust that they have more options to figure that out. And that's what gives me confidence in Kansas this year, but um, bites at the apple. That's but but I think I, I think the AP, I think them being number 1 is good for the sport. I think uh Bosco was trying to convince me that Bama should be one and that, and having some new blood, but I, I think I ultimately landed on having a familiar face in Kansas and uh it sucks and people people hate it and they're like this is ridiculous to just have the same blue bloods over and over and all that, but that's what you want. You want the familiarity. You if you want to sell it to a national audience too to just be like Hunter Dickinson, Dewan Harris, KJ Adams, Bill Self, Kansas number one, and they're like, "All right, well, those yeah, are names okay. I know. I've heard of that. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're all back. That and, bull, and even that and even blue. if your immediate reaction when you hear that is like, "No, they're not," that's good. That's good that we have we have something to talk about. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm fine with that. I think Bama. I don't think Bama wants to be one any, anyway. I think Bama should just fly under the radar as much yeah. as they can. Well, bulletin board material there for NATO. They have so much depth, and they have. They, they're if they I always say ridiculous. basketball was a thirteen player sport like it was thirteen on thirteen they would be number one by by a leaps and team. bounds yeah. it's crazy they they could have a thirteenth man that's like a top sixty recruit only up. one ball only one ball only one ball oh. we'll see we'll see when but, uh, yeah they I, it helps they play fast so like the one ball thing true. you can you can rotate more players you get more shots if that team played slow I have no idea how you'd make it work but yeah. Oates is uh, Oates is too smart to do that. I think I think I think the top three is perfect for the preseason AP poll. I think having a blue blood in Kansas that uh, is not a is far from a perfect team, but has, I mean, Hunter Hunter's a name. Hunter's a name people know, and having having him be the face of the team, and then be number one again after being number one last year, I think that's just a good story, and I think uh, that's good for the sport, even if people don't think they're the number one team. I think. Having Bama, who's probably actually the number one team, being two is good. And then having the two-time defending national champion being three, where they're like, what the fuck, man? We won yeah. the last two titles. I think it's all perfect because it's um, it's good for discussion. It's good for selling it to the public. And uh, yeah, two of the I top three people got it right. Two of the three from last year's Final Four. Like, that's so identifiable. Like, right. Bama yeah. having been back there and... There were some moments remember, in that game versus UConn, like the Grant Nelson dunk. People are going to remember that. Remember NC State making the Final Four last year? Remember that? Yeah. Can I <laughs> applaud the AP poll for not just like ranking, ranking NC State? State because yeah. well, they went to the Final Four. Yeah, we have to. Yeah. It's like when the Loyola went there. It's like uh, we have yeah. to rank them top twenty. It's like I, we've almost people have learned, and and I'm impressed. There's a lot of growth in the AP voters to not have NC State just camping in the top twenty five simply because they made the Final Four. Um, yeah, you're right about that. That's uh. The, they didn't get a single vote. I'm looking at that's uh, that's impressive. I'm, I'm surprised. I didn't actually look at the bottom of the high point. High point got a vote over who they wow. are voted, but my goodness, I'm surprised they got one over NC State. Oh, we got Ohio State, Michigan State, and Michigan all right next to each other. Oregon, Illinois. How many? How many Big Ten teams receive votes? One, or in the others receiving votes. One, two, three, four, five. I guess just those five. But, but then there's six. like between 14 and 25, there's another yeah. five of them. Uh, eight, uh, it's crazy. Big Ten's going to be nuts. Um, all right. Anything else you got that you want to get off your chest? What, 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 Cody? You got something, Cody? Cody never has any. Yes. Let's what? go. <clears throat> UConn News. No shit? Four-star Eric Ryby, Reby. Yeah. Second center in the class, 2025. 23 overall top 100 just committed to UConn number one center in the is he is he reclassing can he play this year no so do you think, help is on the way do you think Dan Hurley is mad that he's not number one in his class yeah. that's he's, he's yeah. the number two center are you kidding me it's UConn we got he's a seven footer he is he does seem very Hurley he like, seems he fits the, like they asked flinging. him like how he feels and he said like I'm fucking excited to be I think he said I'm excited to be a fucking husky so really <laughs> 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 
the most <laughs> yeah, generic fun. interview question he, he found a way to swear that is that is a hurley man i like that uh i saw our mutual friend uh trilly donovan who does great work um everybody thinks i'm trilly you might be i might be yeah how do i get them to stop thinking that or maybe i want them to continue I, to think that I, I, I mean truly the only way to to convince them you're not is to unmask the real trilly and i don't know if true. that'll ever happen Huh. Uh, we we work with Trilly in our in our burner uh, Discord where he, I believe he put out that Mr. Reby was headed to. Uh, that's UConn what I was going to say. I, so I saw I saw that he a plug for joining it. He hinted at this. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, like we work with him and we had to sign NDAs. I have no idea who he is. And oh I'm really? Like a business partner with him. And I do know. I do know who he is, but um, oh, well, I'm also not allowed to say. Yeah, that's now we're gonna. Press but, you forward after after yeah. we go uh, off off the air here. Um, I do know he or or she, or she. Good, it could be she. Yeah, there you go. It's not. <laughs> 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 All right, we have eliminated half the world's it's population. A, so. It's a he for sure. Yeah, more than uh, that. yeah. Um, I like truly. I like uh, I I did the I did the AMA on the on the Discord. Yeah, people loved it. it people fun. were we had a good time. People were begging to get you in there. They were excited to to interact with you. And then there was just like a steady stream of people only saying family. So family, I don't know how yeah. you found any questions. I was so gonna was just moving constantly. I was uh, I was worried I was gonna have to like basically turn into one of you guys on the three men weave, and they're gonna be like, "What do you think of Towson's backcourt depth this year?" And I was gonna be like, "Fuck, dude, I don't know." <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't they know. would not have given. Um, you. And then every question was just like. What's Bill Simmons like, and what's, what's you know shit like that? Uh, I think I was we, like, yes, thank you. These are easy. I can handle these. We should. Uh, I'm not saying we have to talk about them, but I think we should take a bow for not uh, going this whole AP poll breakdown. We didn't even we didn't mention Arkansas or Cal Perry one time. I'm proud one of us. One single time. Yeah, I'm proud of us. Uh, it's almost like we challenge ourselves to yeah, do it before. I'm proud of us. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I. Uh, I, I'm going to say the same thing I've been saying this whole time. Now that John Calipari has Arkansas's money and he can get any player he wants to play for him, look out because he can amass any amount of talent, Jim. Can you imagine John Calipari having all the talent in the world? That's, that's going to look like. Sounds unrealistic. That's going to be crazy. Yeah. So, so you better get him now situation. You better get him now because <laughs> once John Calipari starts getting – just imagine getting – and this is this is not – this this is this is this could happen. Imagine John Calipari getting every five star, like all the top five stars, like a bunch of like he throws like five guys out that are going to play in the NBA someday. You think he could have a oh top two recruiting class in the country for eight <laughs> straight years? That I think I think that's possible at Arkansas. <laughs> I think he could do that. Look out, college basketball. Uh, I'll, I'll never. I don't think I'll accept it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't oh, think I'll accept I'll, it. I think John Calipari is just not the coach at Arkansas, and he never will be. It'll be <laughs> co cognitive dissonance, like when they <laughs> yeah. when they go to Kentucky and be like, just switch benches. Yeah, like, like what are we doing? Coach this on the, is the home side. Um, one topic that did come up on the show, and then this we can, we can be done after this. Um, I don't know why I said that, but I just yeah, my rushing, out yeah, my begging to get out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm uh, giving that vibe. One one thing that did come up on the show that I want to talk to you about is Kentucky players. Going back to uh, Arkansas practice, was it PJ Washington? Was he the one that? Uh, who was the guy that Arkansas practice? So the, I guess is this like a, a case of you you played for the player or played for the coach, not the school? It was PJ Washington. Kind of PJ Washington um, visited Arkansas practice wearing Arkansas gear. Oh, he wore Arkansas gear. That's too? what I wanted to bring up to you. This is this is this is Rick Pitino. Uh, maybe it's just something about Kentucky. This is this is Rick Pitino uh, adjacent type stuff where um, PJ Washington is going to visit Cal at Arkansas and he's wearing Arkansas shit. Do you do you anticipate this happening more? Because I do. I think I don't think when they play Kentucky, you're going to see like John Wall wearing Arkansas stuff behind the the Arkansas bench against Kentucky. But I do think at some point this season. In fact, I'll say multiple times this season, we will be watching Arkansas games, and they'll cut to behind the bench, and it'll be a, a NBA player, current or former, wearing something Arkansas supporting John Calipari, and I think that's going to be crazy, and I think that's going to be a discussion point throughout the season. Yeah, I'm trying to look at their schedule where it's like, oh, do they play at Villanova, and Tyrese Maxey will be behind the bench. Like You can just yeah. pick out which games guys will be at. Uh, with Neutral side against Baylor, where's that game? In Dallas. Is there any, uh, any, I'm trying to think if there's any Dallas guys. I don't. I don't know if there are any Mavericks that are 
their Kentucky Wildcats. But regardless, PJ Washington. Oh, so he'll be back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, PJ yeah, Washington. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I was like, so that should have. I mean, are we talking other than PJ Washington? Yeah. Um. Uh, no, it, of course that. Yeah, that's definitely going to happen. It's going to feel weird every time to me. W- would those guys also be welcome back behind Mark Pope's bench? Yeah, I don't know. I, th- this is what I guess I'm saying to the state of Kentucky: is you got to draw a line at some point. I don't if if they're either your guys or they're not. They're either your guys or they're Cal's guys. They're yeah, are they Cal's kids or are they your guys. That's what I don't. I don't know. It's very confusing. <laughs> it's very confusing. This is this is the the dilemma you're going to have to help solve throughout the season. It's a mission of the. Yeah, I don't think it'd be. Uh, yeah, I don't think it'd be as big of a deal if Arkansas wasn't a, a conference rival. That's that's the part that's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, because like I'll go to Butler games and support that, but. Like it's. I guess. Do you, but you, but if Butler played, I already told Dad that. Like, if there's ever a scenario where you're playing Ohio State, I'm not cheering for Butler. You good. know that. Yeah, yeah. Like that's not gonna happen. Um. So hopefully that's how the Kentucky guys feel. But we'll see. It it just feels weird when it's a conference rival. But I guess we just live in a. What are conference rivals anymore? Like conference realignment. I don't. Maybe there's loyalty's dead, man. Loyalty's dead. Loyalty's dead. You got all these dudes transferring to Aiden Holloway and your Roddy Gales and yeah, going to transfer the actual arch rival. Yeah. Uh, no. Kobe, what's there's a guy went from UCLA or USC to UCLA, and his last name's escaping me. Johnson, bingo. Kobe Johnson. Look at you know you know you know ball more than I do. But Come I on. I think I broke the news on my Discord. By the way, when, <laughs> when that happened, that's right. Or is it my Discord? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anything to plug before we get out of here? Yeah, join the Discord. Uh, we've got previews of all 364 teams up on there. It's called the Burner. You can find it on. Our Twitter, 3MW underscore CBB. Uh, written stuff, you've got um, Kevin Sweeney and Eric Fawcett doing a film room show. And, of course, you've got all the, the Trilly scoops. We're doing AMAs. We've got Johnny Fanta tonight. Uh, so stepping into your shoes. All right, for the week. something I'm going to say that uh, I'm not going to say. I'm going to say. What a teaser. I'm not going to say. I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, Are we worried... I'm not going to say. Okay. I'm, I can't I'm, say it. I can't say I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm afraid of what you're going to say. Uh, I love Fanta. You know that. I, I hope you're not. I know. I right. know. <laughs> Do we think Fanta is uh, – because these Browns rants he's going on are, are legendary. They're yeah. they're unbelievable. I'm worried Fanta is blowing his load too soon. Like we, we need, I need college basketball fans is what I'm telling you. Yes. Jim. And he's, is got, that, he's got an ALCS team that he's, he's got putting an ALCS a lot of energy team. into. And I'm I was scared to say it because John Fanta has is is a hundred percent approval rating. Um and I don't want this to come across as me criticizing John Fanta in any way, shape, or form. It's more like unsolicited advice. Not even that. It's just more it's a fear. I'm worried. I'm worried our boy's gonna get burnt out. I'm worried by the time the Big East tournament rolls around, John Fanta's out of out of gas because he, he spent his entire fall making selfie videos in his backyard bitching <laughs> about Deshaun Watson and the Browns. We and I liked it at first, but I'm like, John. Let's keep our eye on the ball here. Exactly. We might have to crowdfund, like getting him some Red Bull or some Stella Blue yeah. constantly throughout the month of, now, month of March. I've never, I've never seen John Fanta come close to running out of energy, but I don't want to see it. Is the point? Like, right. so, so a lot of people will hear me say that and they'll be like, "Come on, dude, we're talking about Fanta. He's never. We don't have to worry about that with him." But I'm saying we've never seen him. Can at you this imagine workload. how shattering it would be? Yes, to see it. exactly. That's I don't want to see S- Superman not be able to fly, yeah. and I'm worried that like. <laughs> I'm worried by the time March rolls around and it's the Big East tournament, Madison Square Garden, and Fanta's just kind of like, I need a vacation, man. I yeah, need a vacation. I hope I, Fanta bullying me into more drinks on Bourbon Street will always stand <laughs> out after like all the work he's doing all season. He's he's always got it. This is if, I have faith in you, John. If Fanta brings the heat all season after after his ALCS uh, Guardians run and the Browns rants that he's doing every single week, I thought it was just gonna be a one time thing. I thought it was gonna See, be like now there's expectations. I'm I'm it. ticked off. Yeah, and then uh, that was gonna be it. Now he's like, dude, I got to do this every week. Um, if he still brings the heat at the Big East tournament in the Final Four this year. Certified legend. I mean, he kind of already is, but he'll be. He'll I mean, be at the that point. Deserves to sleep in May. He'll have yeah, taken John's yeah, crown yeah, as the guy yeah, who deserves to yeah, sleep in May. Yeah, and I'm. I'm just a little worried. That's all. I just don't want to. I don't want to see him that way. So I'm hoping he's. He's still finding a way to, to get his shut eye and get ready for the season. Um, this was fun, Jim. As it always is. It's a good time. Uh, I'm ready to. I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks, but I'm ready to get this this thing underway. Yeah, Baylor, Baylor Gonzaga to open the season is big time. Less than three weeks, man. That's it's, big time. It's right around the corner. Oh, and do you, did you see the time and all, the announcement of that? That's like after Monday Night Football. Tips off at ten thirty Central, I think. Oh no shit! Yeah, 
because they didn't want to go against Monday Night Football. That's great. This is the, we need this. We need more of this in college basketball. Be smart about it. Quit trying to just quit, quit assuming that everyone's just going to find it. They're not. Like be smart about when these games are being played, um, and that's going to be huge. Uh, Maui's going to be awesome too, and I Joe Buck kicking it to like Baylor it. Gonzaga is going to be fantastic. It's it's a uh, it's right out like right I, on ESPN. I think so. That's because that's why they waited because they like didn't want to. That's they've incredible. They've got the Manning cast on ESPN too. They're like, well, we'll just make it a late night game. That's incredible. Um, all right, Jim Root, go follow uh, go follow three man weave guys, all that sort of thing. Um, we're gonna have you. Uh, I know I say it all the time, but every time you come on here, I'm like, can't wait to have Jim back on. So we'll get the we'll get the games underway and we'll have Jim back on uh, shortly. Thank you, Jim.